Hello and welcome. So this video takes a quick look into the change history element within the Azure portal and how we can also look uh, and, and view this within Azure policy. So change history allows you to see recent changes and properties for non-compliant Azure resources in Azure policy and also the activity logs. So we will look at both in this video and where to find change history. So this is an extension and an addition um, of a previous Azure governance video uh, where we explained and demoed Azure governance using management groups, RBAC, uh, control uh, and Azure policy. So that video link is in the description if you want to take a look together with other links to support this video. So this video will cover the Azure policy default from Security Center. Um, we will add a virtual network to trigger change history. We'll view that change history in the activity logs. Um, we will change a, a subnet IP on the VNets to trigger uh, change history old and new values so we can view those within the portal. And we'll also um, take a look at non-compliance uh, virtual network um, in uh, Security Center Azure policies and, and change history. So please take a moment to subscribe to the channel. Videos are released weekly on a number of Azure Cloud, uh, technical subjects and certification. Thank you. So I'll give you a minute uh, and a moment to, to hit that subscribe button and then we can get started. Thanks. Okay, so let's have a look at Azure policy. So if we search Azure policy in the search to get here, so this shows the, the built-in default set of policies and these are automatically added and assigned and monitored by Azure Security Center. So here's the list. As you can see, we are 100% compliant. However, what we will do is we will create a, a default VNet in the next section and that will make us non-compliant based on triggering part of this policy. So let's create a, a VNet to trigger your security policy and make us non-compliant. So we're doing this so we can view at the change history and the logs. So if we create our VNet in a previous resource group, and then if we put this in UK South, and let's just accept all the defaults for now. Click next, next, and then create. So after the VNet has been created, let's view the change history in the uh, VNet activity logs. So if we drill into the logs, we can see that we have an event uh, initiated by. So we know uh, the user that's actually created uh, the VNet, which is good. Um, so then we can go into the change history tab now and we can see the changes um, or updating and succeeded uh, in creation. So in the next section, we will make a change to this VNet and then view the history logs again um, before and after. So if we go into our VNet uh, and change the default subnet IP, so then we can trigger the, the change history log so we can view before and after event changes. So we're changing this from 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 to 10.0.1.0. So let's now go back into our activity logs in the VNet and then drill down again. And then we can see the change history here. So we can see the old value of 10.0.0.0 and now the new value of 10.0.1.0. So these are before and after changes uh, together uh, by an indication in the logs who made the change. That's enabled by default. I didn't have to turn anything on to enable uh, the change history within the portal. Now 
Now, because we have added our VNet in and we look uh, now into Azure policy that we can see that we are actually non-compliant, 99%. Um, so when we drill into this, we can see at the top, it lists uh, what we're non-compliant on. So in this case, uh, that's Azure policy audit is turned on to flag a non-compliant um, if DDoS protection is not enabled within the VNet itself. So this is an example, and there'll be a cost associated to turning um, the DDoS protection on to standard. Um, so we need to factor that in um, for approval, depending on our environment uh, and VNet configuration. So as we did before, we can also drill down into change history, and we can see the, the change history of the VNet also within this view within Azure policy. So let's have a quick look on the VNet to see why policy triggered as non-compliant. So DDoS protection is basic and the policy recommended standard for extra security. So thanks for watching the video. Please take a moment to subscribe to the channel. Videos are released weekly on the number of Azure Cloud technical subjects and certification. Thank you. Take care and speak to you all soon.